you want to live sustainably, but you don't know where to start. Sound like you? It can be a minefield and you might feel like you need to be doing everything right from the start. But trust me, that's not the case. Being sustainable is attainable for everyone. There are some things that I wish I knew when I started my sustainability journey and so I'm sharing those with you today. Hi, I'm Charlie. I have a master's in sustainability and I'm an ex-eco shop owner. And with my channel, I chat about everyday sustainability. So subscribe if you want more eco tips. Let's dive in. Here are five things you should know when starting your sustainability journey. Use what you already own. When you're first starting on your journey, you will be targeted like mad, or you'll see all of these different things on eco shops to buy, 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 that is the more sustainable version. I know this, I ran an eco shop for a long time, and I know that there are all these different products out there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are the most sustainable for you. You should not discard items in the name of sustainability. That's the opposite of being sustainable. What you should be doing is using up every last bit of a product that you have or an item, using it right until the end of its lifetime or if you don't like it anymore, doing something with that item, whether it is giving it to friends or family or donating it to somewhere that hopefully will repurpose it in a way. Those are really the thoughts that you should be having when it comes to sustainability. It's not, okay, I've got these four plastic toothbrushes waiting in my cupboard to be used. I'm just gonna throw them out and switch them for a bamboo toothbrush. The end goal is to have a bamboo toothbrush, but only once you've used up those other ones or you've given them to a new home where they will be used. Don't go out buying all these new gadgets Yes, some of them are great, but really think about whether you need something before you're purchasing it. That's what being sustainable is. There's more to being sustainable than just reducing waste. Now, this is a big one. In the past, Instagrammers, social media influencers, YouTubers, the whole zero waste movement was all about reducing your waste. So reducing your packaging, all that kind of stuff. But that's not the only way and potentially the best way to make an impact when living sustainably. I'm not saying don't do those things because every little bit helps, but there are some other things to introduce first that will make a bigger impact on the climate crisis. First up is changing your bank. It's incredible how much banks influence our economy and where all of the wealth is going. So investing in the right bank that aligns with your values is really important. There are several ethical banks out there now that only invest in ethical things. So no fossil fuels, no companies against animal testing, and making sure that human rights are protected. Just to give you a little idea of how much power these banks have, in 2021, UK banks recorded pre-tax profits of 50 billion pounds. That's money from you, me, that we're storing in their banks and they're investing that into the economy. It's up to you and me to help decide where that money goes. So it's easy, align your bank with your values. Another way to really reduce your impact is by choosing a green energy provider. Unfortunately, fossil fuels still account for 60% of all energy generated worldwide. One way that we can make an impact there is by choosing a green energy supplier that uses wind and solar energy. Another really impactful thing you can do is flying less. By driving for a year, you're using on average the same amount of carbon as one return flight from the UK to New York. It's kind of mind blowing when you sit down and really think about those figures of driving your car every day for a year that you're gonna be using the same as one long haul flight return. If we keep doing those long haul flights, then obviously we're gonna be using an insane amount of carbon. So one way you can really limit that is to reduce your long haul flights and any short haul flights that you might have been doing to replace those with other forms of transport, whether that is train travel, if you can do it, or driving. It's not always feasible to fly less, but where you can, you should try to limit that as much as possible. And finally, one of the most impactful things you can do when starting your journey to become more sustainable is very simple, it is voting. While it's important to think about our own carbon footprint, 
really the biggest change we can impact is a systemic change and the biggest way for us to impact that is by choosing our politicians and that's at a local regional and national level you can vote for those politicians who take climate change seriously the ones that have policies that align most closely with your values voting is one of the simplest and most important ways to live sustainably next up i wish someone had told me that living sustainably is not pretty being sustainable does not mean buying the latest eco item like we talked about before. It's not about having your cupboard full of glass jars where you can see inside to everything that you've got in there and they're all matching. It's not about having the latest clothes. It's not about having pristine things. It's about mending, repairing, looking after things that you already own, making do with less. I think there's such a joy in that and all the skills that you can learn from trying to live more sustainably, whether it's sewing or cooking from scratch, gardening, mending your electronics, all of those things. There's a lot to learn from trying to live more sustainably. Your house won't look pretty. I just wanna pre-warn you that it's not gonna be your ideal, beautiful, pristine, aesthetic house because living sustainably is not about that. That doesn't mean that you can't have nice things. It's more about appreciating what you do have and really looking after it. I wish someone had told me not to compare my journey to others. We're all different. We all have different starting lines. We've all got different amounts of money. We've got different family members. We've got different interests, values. Everything about that means that our life and how we decide to live more sustainably is going to look different. There are so many factors at play that make us make different decisions and that's totally okay. Don't compare yourself to the zero waste influencer who is doing everything right. But equally, don't compare yourself to somebody who has loads of family members and is just doing their best. Everybody sits on a scale and you should just try and compare to your past self as to how you're improving and move forward from there. Support each other. This for me is the best advice I could ever have received and something that I think if you don't take anything else away it is this one. It is so important to build a community around you that is engaging in the same kind of work. There are so many different ways that you can join a community group, whether that's your local buy nothing group or your repair cafe or even just joining a community on social media by encouraging others to keep going with what you're doing and learning from each other that is the best way to live more sustainably which of these tips did you find the most helpful or if you're already on your sustainability journey is there anything that you wish that you'd known earlier let us know in the comments and if you're interested in how non-aesthetic your life can look like when you're living sustainably check out my video on ugly sustainability linked above and wherever you are on your sustainability journey i wish you good luck and i can't wait to see what we achieve together until next time